The vast majority of female dishonesty happens before, during, and after relationships. Before. That's all time. A woman will never just tell you she's going to start f***ing anything with a Y chromosome and a pulse. I always perform chromosome analysis on anyone I sleep with. Hey, you're really cute. Can I get a blood sample? Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel, and welcome if you are new. Women! What the heck are they talking about? Almost any of the time. I surely don't know. Luckily, Donovan Sharp, professional pickup artist, is here to teach us how to uh, do the thing, how to understand women. <laughs> I found out about this guy through an old Drew Gooden video where he was looking at pickup artists on Twitter being incredibly cringy, so that's a good video, you should check that out after you watch this, please and thank you. Famously, women speak in a mysteriously contrarian, cryptic way that leaves men bewildered. That's why no men watch my YouTube videos, because they can't understand me. So this is a book about how to understand women by Donovan Sharp, who is a man. First things first, I just lied. This isn't a book, this is a five book series. And if you want to buy them all on Amazon, it'll cost you 100 pounds. I'm gonna share some of the first one with you so you understand that it is absolutely not worth your money. It's 30 quid for a paperback edition of book one. Fortunately, I was able to borrow a copy. My first thought was, clearly books one to four didn't do a very good job. Why would there be five books? Is the secret language of women evolving to counter these books? First of all, a very quick look at Donovan's Womanese 101, that's the title of the books. A quick look at the Womanese 101 Twitter, because it is kind of bare hilaire. The header makes me laugh, it's got a picture of a woman and a big arrow pointing to her, so you're like, oh that, that's what he's talking about. That's a woman, right, it's one of those. I did wonder, and it has the speaking womanese cliff notes. The first two I kind of agree with. Your mistake was thinking that being with her was the key to your happiness, absolutely. Don't go into a relationship hoping it will magically fix everything in your life. Your second mistake was thinking she was an innocent angel that didn't have an agenda of her own. The wording is a little bit weird and cringe, but yes, women are people with their own thoughts and ideas and goals. It is helpful to know that up front. <laughs> and then it goes off a cliff into red pill speak really quickly. Your third mistake was neglecting your own goals and sexual market value because you fell into one-itis. Many of you will not know what a lot of those words meant, in which case, congratulations, you live a better life than me. These are all words from the incel glossary. I guess they're used in general red pill language now, but I certainly heard all of these terms originally and exclusively from incel forums many years ago. Red pill, in this context, in case it comes up, is the term for an awareness of reality as a place where women are sneaky, evil creatures who manipulate men for their own personal gain, and only the most conventionally attractive men can succeed in this world. It's very hard gender binary, gender normative. Women are all like this. Men are all like this. Sexual market value, often shortened to SMV, refers to how desirable one is on the dating market. Yes, they do refer to it as a market. This ideology takes making relationships transactional to a whole new, very literal level. And one-itis is a term used to describe uh, an obsession with a specific romantic interest, believing someone is the one, one-itis, uh, and getting stuck on them, I guess. You're not supposed to fall in love with one person because she could leave you at any moment because women are inherently evil. I picked out a few of my favourite tweets just to give you a little flavour of this guy. The formatting is broken in a very consistent way, so it must be to do with however he's tweeting. We live in a generation of emasculated men living, at home with mama, in the basement late in their 20s and early in their 30s with, no active social life lonely, depressed as fuck addicted, to instant gratification included, perpetual time wasters, such as video gaming. These dudes are always anti-video games. What if you want a hot gamer girlfriend? No, but seriously, I'm a, I'm a hashtag gamer girl. And playing games together with Matt and trolling him relentlessly was like one of the ways we got to know each other early on. It's something I love us doing together. I personally can't imagine dating someone who doesn't game at all or isn't willing to try because it's a huge part of my life. I feel like this sort of thing is so subjective. Any like male masculine improvement thing is almost always like, don't play video games. What if you only played really manly workout games? Beautiful women have so many options that they don't have any choice but to ignore guys they perceive to be of low worth. 
If that's you, don't take it personally. Just improve your perceived status, style, fitness, fucking, fundamentals, and ability to create emotional value. The core messaging of this I kind of agree with, like, don't get hung up on rejection, focus on your own life and improving yourself. I just enjoy the concept of improving your fucking. Who are you supposed to be practicing with? Within 10 seconds of interacting with you, a woman can sense your levels of confidence, status, and power. I love how much of red pill pickup artist, like, theory gives women superpowers. I'm like a high-powered cyborg, I can just look at you and instantly download your stats. Doesn't work with other women because they're too devious and confusing. And if you try and scan a non-binary person, your head just fills with static. Types of men that disgust women. The shy guy. The weak guy. The worshipper. The nice guy, the shy guy. Afraid to express himself freely. Always waits for permission. Always agrees. Doesn't initiate interactions. Doesn't lead the way like a warrior. Poor shy guys are so bad they're in the list twice. What's wrong with a shy guy? Is it because video games are bad? I also like the idea that you have to lead like a warrior. Like it's date night and you rip off your shirt and charge into the restaurant screaming with a spear in your hand. Ah! I have a reservation for 8pm! I put these next two together because they explain one of the fundamental flaws in this theory. Women don't fuck losers, beta males, nice guys, or weird socially inept males. Don't be a guy that she can easily control like a little bitch on a leash. Be a challenge. As we've already heard, if you're soft, gentle, and god forbid, nice, women will not fuck with you. They will just reject you. But also, if you are soft and gentle and nice, women actually will fuck with you, but in a way that you don't want. Like, what if you are a nice, soft, submissive boy and you want a strong woman who prefers to take charge? Like, yes, don't let anyone control you, but but if some women like a man who takes charge, equally, the inverse exists. Red pill bros are like, don't let a woman push you around. You should be pushing them around. <laughs> Here's just a couple of my favorite incomprehensible or insane tweets from this account. Rule take a woman's bullshit personally. Women have to hide their sexual desire because society will judge them for it. Making moves that lead the interaction to sex is your responsibility as a proud penis wielder. Approaching women is a muscle. Make approaching women as part of your daily schedule. That way you'll develop skills and get results on autopilot. It will get to a point where you almost won't be able to stop yourself from having so much sex. That sounds fucking terrifying. <laughs> Don't get too attached to any particular woman. This attachment will make you highly susceptible to manipulation, exploitation, and losing your dominant role. Always retain walk-away power. The implied dread alone will have her on her best behaviour. Women are evil because they don't really love and they're always looking for something better. Make sure you are always looking for something better and never get attached. <laughs> the whole red pill pickup artist thing is basically women are evil, so you have to take steps to be even worse so that you can get pussy. But don't make your whole life about getting pussy. So yeah, this guy who can barely string together a coherent tweet wants you to subscribe to all of his social media and buy his five books on how to understand women. And it all falls apart if you think about any of the advice for longer than five seconds. Don't make your whole life about chasing women. Focus on yourself. But do read my five books on how to understand women and schedule time to look for women in your diary. Let's get into the book. The Book of Womanese, Volume 1. What she says versus what she means. Have you ever wondered how women are always lying and cheating but never seem to get caught? Coming so strong right out the gate, that's sentence number one. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. If women aren't getting caught, how do you know they're always lying and cheating? Hey, welcome to my book. Do you also assume women are inherently bitches? Maybe some of this comes from genuinely bad experiences. And look, cheating fucking sucks. It's a horrible thing to do to someone. Men also cheat. This is a really hard thing to look up, uh, because most people probably aren't going to admit being cheaters, but I looked up a whole bunch of different surveys that have been done at different times on infidelity and relationships. The general gist is that a close percentage of men and women report cheating. At different age ranges surveyed, men cheated more. At other ages, women cheated more. There's no distinct pattern. There is no suggestion that women cheat all the time forever because they're inherently evil. Just that sometimes people cheat on other people for various reasons. So if you think that all women are big horrible cheaters, it's probably a subjective point of view based on your own experience. Which Donovan proves to be true, also on the first page. Have you ever been completely blindsided by the shocking discovery of your wife or girlfriend's cheating? Of course you have. We all have. 
I haven't. Have you all been cheated on? And here he says, I've been cheated on, lied to, taken advantage of, you name it, it's happened to me. Therefore, I assume it has happened to all men ever. <laughs> I never want to blame the person who has been cheated on. It sucks for Donovan that he has experienced that. However, if someone treats all of their relationships as transactional, that might go some way to explaining why he has had so many bad experiences. The common denominator can't be me. Clearly it's the women who are wrong. He goes on to explain how man say what man mean, but woman say sneaky thing that not what she actually mean. Luckily for us, Donovan is fluent in womanese. He doesn't explain how he's decoded the secret language of women or why he, a man, is the best person to teach it to us. Instead, he just talks about how he's been hurt by women so much again. What they say is almost never exactly what they mean. If that's true, then almost everything I've said in this video is a lie. And he's right. I actually hate Shy Guy. I'm a Monty Mole gal. From young hot girls to divorcees to milfs and even cougars, you will always know what women of all ages, all races, and all socioeconomic backgrounds are really telling you when they're speaking to you. Is the language of women different based on socioeconomic background? Or is he saying that the language is the same so you'll be able to understand any of them? Instructions unclear have attracted a real cougar. So the way Donovan teaches us what the woman says versus what she actually means by using a woman's social conscience, which has two departments. <laughs> These departments are Brianna and Gretchen. Brianna is the bad one, which is the honest one, and Gretchen is the good one who is the liar, which is very fucking confusing. That brings us to volume one, chapter one, Saving Face. Women do not like looking bad in any situation. If that was true, I would not stream. <laughs> this, what she actually means, is repeated many times throughout the book. What she says, he cheated on me. What she means, I cheated on him. Women are from opposite land. That's not covert language though, that's just lying. <laughs> this book makes the assertion that any time a woman says her partner cheated on her, she's actually trying to cover up that she cheated on him? Which would imply that men never cheat, which we know isn't true. When she says, he wasn't attentive to my needs, she means, I use this excuse because every woman does. Which doesn't make sense. That's an explanation for what she says, that's not a different thing that she actually means. And Donovan literally teaches men not to be attentive to women's needs. And then teaches that if women say that out loud, they're lying? Isn't that just gaslighting? <laughs> a lot of these statements are apparently just code for cheating. We grew apart means I cheated. I fell out of love with him means I cheated. Basically, if you're a woman and you say anything ever, Donovan thinks you're actually saying that you cheated on your partner. What she says, I'm doing this for me. What she means, I'm doing this for more attention from guys. Okay, fine. It's true. I went to the cafe, I got a coffee and a delicious cinnamon swirl, and it was all just to get attention from men. It was not because I enjoy the delicious flavours. This book literally says, Every decision a woman makes is for the sole purpose of attracting more men. I'm doing this for me is code for I'm doing this for cock. It's all about dick. But like, I already have one. A man, I mean, not a dick. The transvestigators are gonna have a field day with that one. I'm already in a relationship with a guy and previous to that I didn't do everything that I do for cock. <laughs> Feels insane to have to say that, because I'm a person. So I do lots of different things for different reasons. It's so, it's just so fucking weird, like making a coffee, buying this Jar Jar Binks action figure, wearing Pokemon underwear. It was all to increase my opportunities for penis? When she says, I'm not a size queen, what she means is, I love huge dicks. <laughs> Please don't cut any of this video out of context. I don't really know what to say about this one. I've never said this. I've never heard another woman say this. I don't know how often this comes up that it would be useful for a single man to know. What she says, I'm not like most girls. What she means, I'm actually 17 ducks in a trench coat. I'm not like most girls. <laughs> Chapter two, 
Does she wanna fuck or not? The intro to this chapter is actually pretty insightful, it just doesn't do anything with the information. Yes, as it says, women love, enjoy, and want sex as much as men. Lots of women also like sex. And they might be more inclined to hide it because of the societal pressure of labels like slut, which the book keeps using to describe women who like sex. So do you want women to be honest about it or not? <laughs> so this chapter is pretty self-explanatory, it's basically exactly what you, uh, what you would expect from Donovan. Every time she says, I don't want to have sex with him, that means she actually does want to have sex with him. If she says something like, he's a nice guy, that means she doesn't want to have sex with him because women hate nice guys, for sure. Even though apparently we want nice men that we can control and take advantage of, we also don't want anything to do with those nice men. It makes perfect sense. What she says, I hate you. What she means, I love you and I want to fuck you. When a woman says this to you or any other man, it's an open invitation to buttfuck her and blow your load in her face, which is exactly what she wants. It is not. <laughs> I can't express this clearly enough. If a woman says, I hate you, that is not an open invitation to engage in anal sex. And if you assume that it is, you will end up in prison. If she says, I'm not sleeping with you tonight, that means I want you to fuck me. I just don't get it. Like. The societal thing, okay, I vibe with that. Women on the whole are probably not going to be as open about their sexual desires as men are. But when you're in a relationship and you're talking in private, women will say when they want to sleep with you. Or you can ask her. This is a very scary chapter. This is like the third one of these in this chapter that basically says, if she says she doesn't want to fuck you, she actually wants you to fuck her. No. Stop. Go to jail. I will never ever talk to you again means you can fuck me whenever you want. This chapter is just, go on, sexually assault women. If they say they don't want to have sex with you, if they hate you, if they don't ever want to talk to you ever again, all those things are secret code that they want to fuck. What the actual fuck? Chapter three is branch swinging. A woman will never just tell you she's going to start fucking anything with a Y chromosome and a pulse. I always perform chromosome analysis on anyone I sleep with. Hey, you're really cute. Can I get a blood sample? If women want to sleep with any dude with a pulse, why is his whole Twitter about the insane specific things you need to do to get a woman interested? All the lists of things that make you look bad or weak so no woman will fuck you. Which part of this is bullshit? Don't tell me it's all bullshit. Also just noticed that he calls himself Professor Sharp. I have a suspicion he might not be a professor. Uh, this chapter is just everything she says means I want to fuck other men. Again? Chapter four, from the first date to the breakup. Pretty weird to plan for a breakup, but okay. <laughs> Women will yammer on about their feelings, their fears, their pet peeves, and their preferences. You name it, they talk about it. These women, when they're getting into relationships, always talking about their feelings and preferences. I, do, I just, maybe I'm just a naive emotional woman. I don't understand what the downside is. <laughs> What's the problem with that? The next bit is basically like, Women's main complaint about men is that we don't listen. And they're right, we don't listen. Which means Donovan doesn't listen. And again, starting to think, I'm racking up some reasons why he might have had issues with women. The vast majority of female dishonesty happens before, during, and after relationships. Before, after, but also during. That's all time. That's forever. When she says, I want a guy who makes me laugh, she means, I want a guy who makes me wet. With tears. From laughing. This is just a series of ones where she says she wants some kind of personality, she wants a guy to be confident, blah blah blah, and all of them mean, I want a guy who's good in bed. And like, maybe both though? If he's great in bed, but he has no fucking personality, women probably aren't gonna like that. They're probably being honest about that. If you have nothing going for you because your personality is just pickup artistry, <laughs> she's probably telling the truth if she says, I just want someone with personality. When she says, this is a toxic relationship, she means you're making it hard to cheat on you? What the fuck is that? What, what the fuck are you talking about? Similarly, but conversely, if she says, we have such a healthy relationship, she means it will be very easy to cheat on you when I decide to. Women are always either cheating or thinking about when they're going to cheat in the future. 
When she says you're a misogynist, she means you're not worshipping me. That's not... No, you're insecure, controlling and possessive means I need you to give me space so I can cheat on you. If we left in just one of the cheating ones, this book would be like three pages long. <laughs> when she says that's a red flag, she means that's a turn on. Firstly, I don't think any woman is saying that's a red flag to the man that is the red flag right now. That's what you say after the horrendous date with your girlfriends later when you're talking about it. And any woman who does say that does not mean that's a turn on. Yeah, after we finished our date, I saw him kicking a cat down the street when he walked away. So that's really attractive, I guess. We'll see means no. Maybe means nope. More than likely means uh-uh. If nothing comes up, sure means sure won't. I'm super busy means I'm not busy. I just don't like you, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna say this. It seems likely, based on this book, that Donovan has a thing for non-consensual anal. Because apparently, don't even think about anal means if you try to fuck me in the ass, I'll probably let you. I guess at least in this one he added the probably? Again, it's just more like opposites. I do not swallow it's degrading means I will swallow every salty drop. Please don't assume that if a woman says she doesn't like something sexually, that means she secretly does and you should do it anyway. Please God don't do that! If a woman proactively tells you she doesn't do anal or doesn't swallow, it means she's thinking about it. Telling you these things unprovoked most definitely means she wants you to try. If you ask her about it, you won't know the real answer. Because women are always lying, remember I've planted that idea in your brain? It's best to wait for her to bring it up, that way you know she's thinking about it, which means she wants to do it. No! No! You know what? These days we are so much better at having open conversations about boundaries and respect and where people draw their lines, so people are more likely to get into a conversation with you at some point about, I don't like doing this thing, that's a hard no for me. That definitely does not secretly mean that she wants you to do the thing that she says she definitely doesn't want you to do. It is terrifying to me that this is in a book that is available for purchase. Like, this is so deeply concerning that I've... I, is there, like, can I report this to someone? Like, this is terrifying. If she says I'm sorry, she means I'm not sorry, but I want you to dump me. So if she bumps into you and is like, oh, sorry, uh, dump her. Clumsy slut. <laughs> if she says she wants to get married someday, that means she wants to get married after she's fucked 100 guys, which is quite a lot of guys. If she says I saw my ex the other day, she means I've been fucking my ex for six months, which is very specific. If she says don't worry, I'm on birth control, she means I'm lying so I can trap you with a kid. I thought the problem was that women are always leaving you for other men. I thought they didn't want to trap you because they're always looking for something better. At least this page says, wrap your cock, gentlemen. Yeah? If she says, you treat me so well, she means, you're boring me, so I'm going to cheat soon. <laughs> Not gonna lie, if I said to Matt, you treat me so well, which is a phrasing that I've definitely never used, but that's the sort of thing I'd say uh, after he bought me some Smarties. And what I would actually mean is, keep buying me Smarties. I love Smarties. I guess women are manipulative. If she says, I think I'm falling in love with you, she actually means, I'm not falling for you, I'm just tired of being single. This is like, this kind of negates any of the bits of, of slightly good advice about focusing on yourself and not worrying about rejection, because it just is basically telling the men reading this that even if a woman says she's in love with you and she wants to be with you, she actually doesn't love you. That's so fucking sad. And yet, if she asks, where's this headed, that means she wants to be your girlfriend. But that is, like, contradictory with half of the other ones we've read. If she says, I've been through a lot, apparently she means I've fucked a lot of guys. Likewise, if she says, I've made a lot of mistakes in life, she's, <laughs> she means I've fucked so many guys. Because it's all about sex. I think, I think, Donovan might be a little bit obsessed with the old S-E-X, and therefore kind of has implanted that idea onto everyone, and assumes that everyone, women included, are obsessed with sex and thinking about sex all the time, and everything they ever say is to do with sex that they've had. I've been through some stuff could mean like, 
family things, issues with friends, personal health issues. Like, that could be so many things. But Donovan's like, ah, she's fucked a lot of guys. That's what she's saying to me right now. When she says, I have a boyfriend, what she means is, I do have a boyfriend, but I'll fuck you if I like you enough. If she says I'm happily married, she means, I am so ready to cheat on my husband, because that's women are cheating all the time forever. Every second of every day, if they're not cheating, they're thinking about when they're gonna cheat next. Well, I've taken enough points of emotional damage for one day, uh, yeah. My advice is to not listen to Donovan Sharp on anything he says ever, especially the deeply, deeply worrying content. There is more deeply worrying content than I was hoping for in the book, especially with how much of it is just, if she says she doesn't want to have sex with you, don't believe her, go for it anyway. I hope no one fucking reads this book, because someone's gonna get hurt. It's not too dissimilar, apart from how overtly terrible that side of it is, uh, from any other pickup artist guide we've read. This is just a particularly funny way of presenting it in this, like, I'm taking women are always lying to its logical conclusion of everything they say is a lie, and I'm gonna translate the lies for you. All of these things mean she's cheating on you. <laughs> it's really, like, it's a really fucking sad way of looking at life. Like, if a woman ever says she's in love with you, that's also a lie. Like, bro, bro's been hurt. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do give this video a like, consider subscribing, maybe hit that notification button so you don't miss out on future videos. If you speak womanese, please drop some hilarious translations for me in the comment section, I would really enjoy that. If for some reason you like listening to me and you want to hear more from me, do consider checking out Little Duck Gaming, my little gaming channel, we have a lot of fun over there, I upload quite regularly. If you would like to support me and what I do here, you can become a channel member. You get some funky little emotes and comment priority. The best way, of course, to support this channel is via the Patreon, so go and check out patreon.com slash emmathornvideos. With that, I must give a big old shout out and a thank you to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. Especially Conla. God damn it, Conla. <laughs>